everyone here back with another Splinterlands video. So on my last arbitrage video, um, so not my most recent pack opening, because that one wasn't an arbitrage one, that was a building up my deck for Champions League pack opening. But in this one from May 16th, where I opened up 64 packs with the goal of making a profit. I got two questions here, one from Raul and one from Kevin, which uh, I'm going to respond to you guys after I make this video to let you know that a video is coming out answering this question. If you guys respond back with your in-game name, I will send you some DEC. Uh, you know, don't forget to leave your in-game name when you ask questions like this, because when I decide to make a video on your questions, uh, you know, you're providing me with content. Uh, so I want to reward you guys for that. So yeah, make sure you leave your uh, in-game name. If you come back and comment or re reply to my reply, I'll send it to you guys. But they both had questions basically about the process. So he wanted to know how you buy it from the beginning. Raul did. And then Kevin said, how do you go and sell all of those cards, basically? Um, do, you manually, do you manually each list each one? So basically, I'm going to walk you through the entire process from start to finish of how I card flip when, the, when it makes sense. And it involves a couple websites, and I'll try to remember to post those websites in the description, but I'll be talking about them pretty frequently. And they're tools you should um, hopefully already be using, and if not, should immediately start using. So yeah, basically first thing I do is I start at splintercards.com, which I know I've talked about before. So splintercards.com. And right here on the homepage, there's these two, these two things. There is the Chaos Legion cost, on Hive Engine, which we'll get to Hive Engine in a second. So this is basically the cost you can buy it for on the secondary market right now, which is $3.25. Then this pack estimated value is how much each pack, the contents of each pack are expected to be worth. So with both potions. So each Chaos Legion pack you open right now, the average value is $3.64. Obviously that varies greatly, right? If you get four commons and none of them are gold foil and you know one of the cheapest rares, you're talking about maybe 50 cents, right? But if you pull any, you know, gold foil legendary, obviously, then you're talking, you know, 80 to $120. I actually don't even know what they're going for right now, but you know, you're talking about $100. Um, so this is just the average. You know, that's why if you're going to do this art going to do these arbitrages, it's usually better the more packs you do because that's going to guarantee or not guarantee but get closer to guaranteeing this difference right here but this difference isn't exactly perfect and they have a tool for that um oh yeah one more point on that if you do it with five packs right it's you know you could get very easily get five packs that are worth a dollar and then you've lost you know a large sum of the money that you were doing but when you get, uh, when you use more and more packs, it's more likely you're going to have a pack, you know, that's worth $30, $40, right? Which sort of evens out the packs you'll get that are lower than that. So go up here to tools and then you go to pack value. If it wants to load. There we go. So cost paid for a pack. You put this in here, which is $3.25 right now. You want to have both potions used. Then they give all of this other options, right? So if you're in a guild, you might get discounts for buying potions, right? Or let's say you have a ton of potions like I do right now. You could hit this free potions one, right? So I consider them free because I bought them such a long time ago. They're not even relevant to my current calculations. And I've gotten a ton of them from rewards. So for my purposes, I do free. Then you want to add the market fee, right? Oh, and the other thing is bonus packs, right? So... Uh, if any of your packs are bonus packs using vouchers and stuff, that changes the math as well. You don't need to worry about the gold cap because none of the gold foil legendaries are over five thousand uh, dollars. They basically do this because, you know, if you look at a gold foil legendary from one of the older sets, the price could be you know hundred thousand dollars, but that's probably not what they're going to end up going for. You'll have to list it lower than that for someone to buy it. But there's just so few of them that there's no liquidity that when you take that list price of what it's listed for, that's what gets pulled in. Um, so if you add the gold cap, it sort of limits gold foil legendaries to $5,000 if their market value is above that. Um, you know, not relevant here because the highest are, you know, over a hundred, just over a hundred dollars, but just so you guys know. 
And then what you're going to do is calculate. So you can just do it off number of packs being one. Doesn't really matter. Takes a second. You see 22 cents per pack is the expected value that you'll get per pack right now. Um, you know, and if you had a hundred, let's say, right? Like let's say you had a little over $300 and you want to try this. It's just going to be this times a hundred. So it should be like 22 bucks, I think. Yeah, a little under. So $21 would be the expectation that you would make as a profit if you did this. Now, obviously, if you have to buy potions for this, so let's say you get rid of the free potions, let's say you're in a guild, you guys are really good and you have a 6% uh, for potions, always use both potions. So, you you know, you shouldn't worry about this. Hit calculate. And then the, you know, the math obviously changes. You know, all of a sudden now the arbitrage isn't there, right? So like right now it really only makes sense to do this. The gap isn't wide enough unless you have this, you already have a huge stockpile of potions. If you have to go in and buy a bunch of potions right now, you would be losing money on average uh, every time you did this. But yeah, if you, if you are sitting there and you have a ton of potions, you don't know what to do with them. We're going to go back to the free potions. You know, you'd have an opportunity to make money. So this is basically what I look at to start is right here. Does this make sense? You know, if it was here, I don't know, I, I, if I was bored, I would probably do it, but this doesn't like scream to me like, you know, I have to be flipping cards right now, but it is there if you have the potion. So you could do this and you would expect it and you'd be expected to make, you know, $20 if you did it with a hundred packs, really not bad. And again, obviously luck comes into it. You could get two gold foil legendaries and you'll blow that amount out of the water. You could get zero legendaries in the hundred packs, which is, you know, unlikely. But if you watch my last pack opening video, you'll see. I didn't get a lot of legendaries, um, so you know it could happen. So I start here. If the numbers make sense, I then go to Splinterlands. I then go to my DEC, which is what I'm going to use here. I'm going to do Hive Engine, and then I'm going to type in the amount I want to transfer. I'm not actually going to transfer anything um, because I don't want to do this right now. Um, but yeah, I would type in, you know, presumably if I'm going to use all my money, I would just copy and paste this in here. I would then hit transfer out and what this is going to do is send the DEC from my in-game wallet to my Hive Engine wallet, which is the next step. So now this next site right here is Hive Engine. So you're going to go to your wallet. You'll see I have some random, like I have some of the PKM token here, um, some SPT from the blogging, but your DEC will show up here. So I have zero right now, but your DEC will show up here. You're then going to hit trade, the two arrows. This is going to bring up DEC versus Hive. Basically, every you see I have a little bit of Hive here, um, just from doing this previously. Everything operates through Hive, right? I'm actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to buy some DEC just to show you guys. You know exactly how to transact here. Not a lot, because I obviously don't. I'm going to buy 200 DEC. Firm. You know, you saw I had like 0.555 hive or whatever that was. That number will now be zero over here on the left. And on the right, you should see I have 200 something DEC. So yeah, effectively zero. And then, you know, 252 what I just purchased DEC. So yeah, it's very easy and quick to transact um, in this marketplace. Basically, you're gonna do the opposite of what I, what I just did and go from this, the DEC, to hive. Then once you have Hive, you're going to come to this DEC right here, scroll down, or actually you can just type it in. So you're going to type in Chaos. So that is the name of the packs. Be careful not to do X Chaos. That was some like pre, uh, I actually forget exactly what this was, but it was some sort of, you know, you could buy packs in the pre-sale and then just get access to the, or you, you could just get access to the airdrops if you, you know, sort of went in with a group or something. I forget what that was, but this is something completely different. So ignore this. It's just chaos. You would then see that you had some hive right here, right? Because you just sold your DEC. So you're going to have more hive than this. And you're going to buy chaos packs right from this screen. So you can see right now someone selling 64 packs at 9, 6.9 hive. So this is all in hive. Remember that. And you can also see up here, just to confirm, 6.9 is the last price. 
you can see this is $3.25. So if your calculation was based on that, then you could go ahead and you know buy up these 64 packs and and do the arbitrage. So once you buy the packs, you want to come back to your wallet. They will show up here in your wallet. Uh, you'll see this chaos. It'll say 64. It'll probably move to the top because it'll probably be your highest USD value. You then come back to Splinterlands. You then go to uh, open. You then hit this, these two things down here, convert. You are then going to type in, you know, in this case, in that hypothetical, we just bought 64. It would also show up, it's going to show up here at Hive Engine. You'll see Hive Engine and the number of packs. You're going to hit Hive Engine and you're going to hit deposit. So tokenize is to send packs from your in-game here. Like, you know how we sent the DEC to the Hive Engine to start so that we could buy these? Let's say you had chaos packs here and you wanted to sell the chaos packs on the Hive Engine. It wouldn't really make sense for you to do that right now. But, you know, you know, let's say you have a ton of packs and sitting in the game that you don't want to open and a couple months from now, chaos packs are $8 and you want to go and sell them. That's something you could do. You'd want to come here and hit tokenize and that would send packs from here to the Hive Engine. But for now, we would want to deposit, so we would hit deposit. Normally it takes a little bit of time. You probably have to refresh a couple times. But then your 64 packs will show up right here. Then you open up all your cards. Hopefully you get, you know, some amazing cards. But the problem is you're going to get a bunch of cards, right? So you don't want to go through and sell all of them one by one, obviously. Um, because that would take forever. and You don't want to do it manually. So here's the process that I normally do. I go to my cards. This is the first thing. So like right now, if, you, if you're not combining any of your cards, or you're not trying to combine any of your cards, you don't need to worry about this step. But right now I'm trying to build up my deck, so I do. And this is a good example right here. I go through and I combine any of the cards I want to level up. So the Radiated Brute, for example, I want to level up to level 10 to get his four attack. So I opened up 16 in my previous pack opening. So I combined them and I'll show you why that's important in a second, but you don't want to have any single cards for specifically chaos, just hanging around, um, unless you want to sell them. So here are the radiated scorcher, right? I have them at a level seven right here. I, I don't want to, you know, I don't care right now. Eventually I'll want to get them to a level 10 for the extra speed and health, you know, for the melee only or super sneak type stuff. But for now, I have the second attack. I'm good with that. I'm willing to sell the Radiated Scorcher. So here's the thing. If you're doing arbitrage, you'll pure arbitrage, you need to sell everything to make it work, right? But, you know, it's not perfect. You might get a card or a summoner that you really, really need. Um, so you might combine them. If you don't want to combine them, you don't have to do this step, right? And once I show you the selling step, you'll understand why you have to combine them. But for me, in my last pack opening, I wasn't doing pure arbitrage. I was selling cards I didn't need and combining cards I wanted. That's why you can see all of my, you know, meters halfway filled up because, you know, like the River Nymph gets swiftness at level eight. So I don't want to sell any of my River Nymphs, so I combined them. So once you have all of your single cards ready to sell that you just opened, you're then going to go to Peak Monsters, which again is something if you're not using Peak Monsters, got to start using peak monsters. It's the best marketplace. Um, and basically you're going to be in the, my card screen, which is where I'm at. You're going to go to chaos and this is going to work out well because I just had my, I just did my previous pack opening of the 110 packs. Um, so I have cards to sell. You're going to hit one here at the level. So this is why you need to get rid of any cards you don't, you want to combine any cards you don't want to sell um, or lock them or something like that. Um, but it's very important to make sure that you filter out these cards. Okay, so there's something going on with my filter, I think. Hmm. Do I have something down here clicked? Let's 
because I should have more than that. Hold on. Let's uh, refresh. Because I know for a fact I have two Bakjiras that weren't coming up. Like right here, I have two level one Bakjiras. So if I go level one, there we go. I don't know. I must have had something else clicked here. I do Chaos Legion. Okay. Yeah. Here are here's more like it. So I have all of these cards to sell. So these are cards that I don't want to combine. And so I have them in single copies. And so it helps filter them for me. Make sure you do Chaos and make sure you do one. And you get this whole list here of cards that, you know, I'm ready to sell with, with a couple exceptions, but I'll show you how to get around that. So I'm going to ref hit this refresh button so you get updated prices. We're then going to select all. That's going to bring up the 177 right here, but there's one important step. Don't forget this. So if you have level one fiends that you don't want to sell, you have to type in fiends here and unclick them. Or if you have any level one chaos cards that you don't want to combine for some reason and you picked them up in the select all, you need to unclick them or you're going to list them. So for me, I know it's just the fiends. Like I don't have a quicks level one or anything like that. Yeah. So for me, I went through and I made sure that it's just the fiends. And I know that's part of my process to unclick them. Um, but all these other cards, I am good to sell. So I have them all highlighted. I then click up here. I then hit sell. And this big intimidating screen pops up. But what I basically do is I scroll to the bottom and I do a spot check on sort of the more expensive cards to make sure the number makes sense to me. Um, sometimes it can get a little wonky. It's extremely accurate. Um, but you know, you just always want to scroll quickly and double check. Um, mainly on the high priced cards. Everything was good to me. I then hit relative. This is going to put in a percentage. I do negative 0.01. And basically this is just going to put it right below the current low price. You, the one thing you need to be careful of is if like someone came in for a Bakjira, for example, that was, you know, a fully maxed out level and had it at $8 per BCX. I checked before and this is about the low right now then I would put it below that full max level. So if there's a huge gap between the full max level card and then the one BCX card that's above it, which sometimes it can be multiple dollars, um, you're gonna end up putting it below that max BCX, which you know will probably you'll probably lose some money on that. Um, so you might wanna sort of, un like let's say if that was the case for Bakjira and I saw like $7 and I knew they were trading closer to 10, then I would go back, I would unclick these and then I would just manually list these two. Um, but in terms of all of these, I'm very comfortable just listing them because if I'm losing out, it's probably pennies um, and it's good for saving my time. So I hit review, confirm, confirm, I'm going to have to hit it twice. And then you'll see that I just listed all these cards. Well, hopefully that's a glitch because I hope I didn't list that for six cents there we go <laughs> fix that that would have been bad um so then these will start to sell you'll probably see it. yep yeah one of them already sold probably the back if i were to guess based on how much it jumped up but we're not done because presumably right you open some gold cards so now you're gonna unclick the one you're gonna keep the chaos legion and you're gonna hit gold and now I know, so I have these two that I have listed right now. Um, so I'm gonna do the for sale no. So now I know these are all cards that I wanna sell from Chaos Legion because I don't, I'm not building up Chaos Legion gold cards. Um, if you are, again, make sure you unclick them. This is normally a more manageable screen to look at because you're gonna get less golds than you are regular cards. But you know, you want to make sure you sell these because, you know, this is $160, almost double what I had from the common cards. So I'm going to select all again. And then same exact process. Sell. Do a quick spot check to make sure it makes sense. Yeah, so I know these are about $30 right now, the gold foil um, summoners. Oh, that's a bummer. This gold foil epic's only going for 12 right now. So I might double check that one. So that one looks a little suspicious. It could be true because, 
you know, it's probably one of the least expensive Epic cards. Um, but just for the sake of being sure, I'm gonna unclick the Temporal Master. And then do the same exact thing I just did. So I'm gonna do uh, negative 0 0.05. Oh wait, sorry, I wanted to do 0 0.01. I'm gonna cancel that. Cause I just wanna list it right below. And they won't all sell right, right away, obviously, but some of them will, right? These like lower price ones will sell pretty quickly. Just gotta confirm. All right, you know, I'm already up a bunch of DEC cause of previous stuff falling. And then my last step is to check the Temporal Master. So I'm just gonna go to Epic, Gold, um, Modern, Life. I should narrow it down enough. Temporal Master, yep, $12, wow. Yeah, and there's a pretty healthy market behind it. So if I wanna get rid of that, I'm gonna have to put it up for about, you know, 1258, which is what I'm gonna do. Because again, right now I'm working on building up my deck, so I wanna get some DEC that I can then put into the cards I actually want. So I will certainly take the $12 or whatever it was. What is it? Yeah, so that is the accurate number. Sure, I'll just come in and do 12.55. Cool. And then when you come back to your My Cards and if you, you know, remove all of these filters and you hit this list price thing up here, uh, you'll be able to sort of track. You know, a lot of these will go pretty quickly, but you'll have to sort of go in and adjust some. You know, like these gold foils, I might have to adjust uh, and stuff like that. Basically, then I wait some time and these will slowly start to sell, adjust some, and then my DEC piles up. And then I think about doing it again. So yeah, that's the entire process. Um, I hope it was clear. I hope, you know, Letting you guys know how to do this obviously will decrease my chances of um, being able to pull this off because you'll have more and more people who are, know this process. But yeah, thanks to Raul and Kevin for the um, for the questions. I'm going to uh, sort of reply to thank you and let you know that a video is coming out soon. And then if you guys respond with your in-game name, I will send you guys some DEC. If you uh, learned anything new from this video, it'd be awesome if you could like and subscribe. Uh, trying to push closer to that 1,000 subscriber mark. And um, yeah, spread the good word of Splinterlands to as many people as possible. Hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you soon.